I don't say thank you enough. You guys are show a great appreciation, even from October of Pastor's Appreciation, the cards and the letters. I don't know if I ever officially got up here. I've done a little thing on social media. But I just want to let you know that I'm grateful for you and the things that you do, whether you are, are just here to hand, give me a handshake or a hug on the neck or if you financially contribute to my life. I want to tell you thank you because it means the same to me. Whatever the Lord's called you to do to me, for me, and honor the gift that's on me, it is a very much a blessing, even to the decorations. Can I say that? Can we, can we appreciate that? They didn't do it for me. They did it for you. Whoever did it, we want to say thank you. I can tell you this. It was some, I, I don't want to point them out. Or I ain't going to point them out because of a statement I'm going to say. But this wasn't all young ladies up here done this decoration. Huh? It wasn't all young ladies. It's, some ladies through the age, and I want to say thank you for, for you ladies who are above the age of 40, or 39 and holding. <laughs> Wherever you are, I'm not getting into that, but I want to thank you for putting that extra effort. Uh, this place looks beautiful um, because of the efforts of those who make it that way. These tables are set up by some people for us to dine on today, some people who just took some time out of their schedule. And I just want to appreciate them and say thank you. From my position, thank you so much for making a place for our guests. If you're a guest in this house, we are glad you are here. Help me out, family. Help me out. <clears throat> Brother, I had a brother call me this week and said, uh, Pastor, I want to know if so-and-so can come. I said, yeah, man, they come to church any time. He said, I just wanted to check. I said, as long as they ain't going to start no trouble, you know, hey, the doors of the church house are open, and we are glad to have all of you. If you're just visiting, if you're in for a quick visit, I'm glad you came to church. If you're checking it out and you're looking for a church home, you just found one, and I'm glad you are here. This is your new church. This is your new church, so... It's good to be here. I'm glad. I don't believe I have any other business that I need to tend to other than just to say thank you. And we are a little bit early here on the 12th of the month talking about Merry Christmas, but I understand that you will have a busy schedule in the next couple of weeks, and I wanted to get you at the table before you got wore out. So I want you to uh, don't reminisce on your next couple of weeks of scheduling at the table today. Just, you know, just eat whatever it is and enjoy it. Enjoy the company and break bread with each other. Um, I'm just going to tell you right now, um, I, I got, they, they gave me a time limit today. It's different for you guests. This is a little different. I don't have a time limit of when to stop. They told me I got to preach until. Until. Uh, because we did, order, we did order some fresh fried chicken. Come on. Let, all right, most of y'all come out of a Baptist church. Y'all know you. Somebody help me out right here. We love fried chicken. Huh? Look, I'll tell you one thing. You ought to know something about that right there. So, uh, but, but anyway, if you're going to get it fresh and fried in here, it ain't going to be here until a little bit after 1130. So you're just going to have to put up with me. I'll try not to ramble. and We set up a few things to spend some time together. But uh, I do have a quick word I want to drop on you that I think you can build from and go from. It's going to be in the book of Luke, book of Luke, chapter 11. As you turn it or whatever you're doing, flipping or just going to listen or watch it behind me, that's fine too. That's okay. Um, but I did want to take the time, and uh, I didn't ask for this, but uh, Miss Joe caught my heart. My heart is to build a family more than build a church. I want to do life together with you all, and I'm glad. Uh, we, we wanted to have round tables, but it's too many of you all. Hey, that's a blessing. So, so, I know pastor's trying to fill chairs this morning, and we're trying to make room, so I'm glad, glad to have that in this house. But uh, Because at round tables you can face each other a lot more and have be in more relation. But, hey, this is wonderful. This is great. I didn't ask for this, but Miss Joe caught my heart and said, Pastor wants to do it, so we're going to do just family gathering here at the table right in the sanctuary. Uh, because if we can't do family together, if we can't do life like that together, then we don't even need to worry about coming to church. It's just a religious activity. Uh, so I'm glad to be here breaking bread and building relationships with you. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the spirit of the gift. We've been in a series there. Uh, so can somebody open this for me? It's in Because I know I'm going to need it. It ain't cracked. All right, I get the water. You keep the hoodie, but I'm going to get the water back. <laughs> you got it open? Okay, thank you, sweetie. Appreciate you so much. Thank you, Miss Hannah. Miss Hannah, thank you so much. I told her, go help Sister Brooke. I forgot I gave the shirt away. I really had forgot I gave the shirt away. I said, go help Sister Brooke hold it. Uh, 
So in the spirit of a gift is a series we've been in, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about in, 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 as the Lord gave us the instruction to speak on the spirit of the gift is not so much what you give, but what spirit did you give it in? Where was your heart in your giving? Where, where were you when you released it? Where were you when you bought it? I'm going to say this. <coughs> uh, the mothers in the house probably ain't going to like it. My wife looked at me crazy when I said it. But I, I won't know where all this come from. I got to get exactly what you told me you wanted. What about if I just want to give you something? I'm going to give you what I want to give you. If the spirit of the gift is not. Think about the pressure now. Look here. They sent me a picture of my mother-in-law them last night. They was at Ross at like 9.30. They was at the back of the store waiting in line, Christmas shopping. In the name of Jesus, you're going to set me free from that place. I can tell you now. <laughs> but it's all in the name, and there's nothing wrong with that. And you ladies like to do it more than most of us men. Um, and I do want to be able to bless people in the spirit of the gift and giving with what they would want. But sometimes I see a need in your life that I feel like would benefit you more than just what you would want. Sister River talked about that last week. The, the beggar wanted alms, but alms, wasn't gonna, alms was going to keep him where he'd been for 38 years. Alms going to keep him there begging. That's what alms was going to do. What they do? They gave him healing. Exactly what he needed. Stand up and walk. So, so we see a lot of times in this time of the year a lot of stress and pressure of trying to meet the quota. Look, ain't nobody knows it like my boys. Them boys know exactly what they wanted. I couldn't eat more Taco Bell for them. They, hey, they knew exactly what they wanted, and they wanted me to be able to get it and deliver. And hey, you know what? As a father, I didn't mind doing that, and that's what a lot of it is. Sometimes I just want to get you what I want to give you, but as a father, I do like to be able to meet your needs, and I want to give you the thing. So in the spirit of the gift, let's go into the word as we pray. Uh, Father, I ask you to bless the reading and the hearing of your word today. God, may it fall on good hearts. God, may it come from a good source. Just use me as a reed as you blow your breath in this place. May I translate your communication into the language that people can understand today. God, use me. God, and open the hearts of your people in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So Luke 11, chapter 11, verse 9, Jesus was talking. It's in red. It says, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Okay, in case we always thought God didn't want to bless us, that's the first one. You can mark that out. The Lord does want to bless you. Jesus, the Son of God, just said, ask. Uh, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open. We're going to dig in that in the next couple of weeks a little bit more. Verse 10 says, for everyone who asks receives. Who? Everyone. Everyone. Not just Jews. Not just Israelites. Not just preachers. Not just holy ones. Not just everybody who got it right. But everybody who asks. The Lord is faithful to deliver to you, will receive. And he who seeks finds. And he who, who knocks it will be open to him. Here's what I want to talk in verse 11 says, if a son, everybody say a son, son. asks for bread from a father among you, will you give him a stone? Hmm. Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent instead of a fish? Here's one they didn't say. They, they just forgot 12, but I like to talk about it on verse 12. It says, if he asks for an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? Hmm. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? We'll talk about it, but he's making a comparison here. And we're not going to talk about that comparison, but I want to go back and talk about the gifts. The comparison of you being evil fathers, us being sinful in nature, know how to bless the ones that we love. How much more can our Father in heaven want to bless us? Somebody ought to help me right there. The spirit of a gift, whenever it comes from the giver. huh? He said, if you know how to do it, don't you think your Father in heaven knows how to do it? Okay, that's good. Well, we're going to, let's dig into it, but I want to take a moment and look. Real quick, at, at this, and I'm carrying this baton up here because I see a correlation in the Word of God uh, of, of being able to pass the baton. Not just giving gifts, but can I give you what you need? Can I, can I give you something better than you thought you needed? And it's between a father and a son, it's between one generation and the other generation. 
He said, which of you of being among us was a father if, I, if your son asked for? You would give him this or you would give him that. So, so I saw and I, as I dug and studied a little bit in the word, you know, sons are always good to receive. Matter of fact, you probably didn't have a problem receiving until you started providing for yourself. Watch this, Brother Ricky, until you earned it. When you started earning, something happened inside of you. Tell me the truth now. When you got your job, all of a sudden, no, you don't have to give me that. I don't need that, yada, yada, yada. Hey, when you was 12 or 13, you expect somebody to give you something. I'm just, I'm just being real with you, but somewhere between us earning and providing for ourselves, we picked up a pride that says we can't receive. Oh, I'm talking to the church people in this place today. Uh, just people in general, we, we develop a pride inside ourselves that says we don't know how to receive anymore because somewhere down the line we learn how to earn. And receiving is just as important as learning how to give. Being able to receive with the right heart. <laughs> it's quiet in this place till you went to the birthday party and you got your grandbaby something you thought he ought to want and he didn't want it. He threw it down and played with something else. Then you understand somebody who didn't know how to receive. Giving and receiving in the right manner comes with maturity. Giving, giving is, is very much a maturing place because uh, we naturally know how to receive, but as we get to the place we forget that, we build up a pride. That keeps us from receiving, and oftentimes it leads us in the place where we don't want to give either. I'm just talking to you today. That, that we say we earn that. <laughs> For a while, it's, I earned this, I can't receive it. And if you don't watch out, I earned it, I can't give it. But in the spirit of a gift, here written in red, he said, which one of y'all being a father, which one of y'all that's reached a level of maturity couldn't discern what to give? We'll talk about that in a minute. First, I wanted to give you the only quote that I really got right here for you today. You can write it down. Maybe it's a tweetable moment. But immaturity will transpose a giving opportunity into selfish gratuity. Immaturity will often take a giving opportunity and turn it into selfish gratuity. The opportunity to be able to give is always there. Whether you know what you have to give or not, you always have something to give. I want to let you know that you, the source that you're connected to, if you're connected to Christ, is a source that don't run out. It don't run dry. You always have. Listen, if, if you've got Christ in your heart, if you don't, we'll deal with that in a little while. But if you've got Christ in your heart, you always got hope to give. You always got peace you can share. If you live by the fruits of the Spirit, you ought to always have joy somewhere around you. There's always a gift inside of you. As a body, there's a gift inside of you to always be able to give. But if we're not careful, we'll hoard that up all to ourselves and just say, well, I wish their, wish their Christmas was merry. Mine sure is. Hmm? Selfish gratuity. The things the Lord has done in our lives, we will harbor and keep to ourselves. But with maturity, with maturity will allow me to be able to share what the Lord has done in my life. And once you get to the place to where you are a cheerful giver in the spirit of a gift, it brings as much joy to watch somebody receive what you have given as it is for you to receive what they have given. Somebody help me. You knew how fun it was on Christmas morning whenever you got up. Nobody else, what, what, what it said, nothing was stirring, not even a mouse. And you easing through there trying to wake up a brother or a sister trying to wake mom and daddy up, trying to see what's going on, what's been left, whoever left it. You could talk about that later, but whatever's been left. And then fast forward 15, 20 years when you got that toddler who's running around screaming because he's found out what's been left. What joy. See, as we mature, we progress through life. And we start understanding the, the real nature of being able to give and to be able to see. We, we begin to understand the spirit of the gift. Let me not ramble on too much here, but I wanted to talk for a minute. The difference in a son and a father. As we go through these, these examples real quick, uh, we need to learn how to be able to pass the baton. Whether it's the giving, because it's important for you to teach your children how to give. Not to give, sometimes how to give. I mean, 
To give is, here, I gave it. I got my tail tore up for some occasions like that before. And they should. We hadn't taught them how to give if that's how they give the baton. We're not going to win the race. We're not going to do what we come to do if that's how they're going to give the baton. If you finish running your lap and you're just going to sling it and maybe they'll catch it, we haven't learned to give yet. See, I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking to you about to give, but how to give. In the spirit of a gift, what can you do? How, how can you change? How can you improve the fact that, that you learned how to give? As Jesus was talking to these people, he was, he was saying, I need you to learn to pass the baton from the fathers to the sons in this manner. Let's talk for just a minute as I flip my pages of notes. He said, which one of y'all would give a stone if he asked for bread? Let's look at the nature of what he asked for. He asked for bread. Sometimes before they can ask for bread, they ask him for bread. Come on, where's the new mama in here? Last night at 2.30, before they could say bread, they let you know they was hungry, didn't they? They didn't mind asking for bread. Which one of y'all would give him a stone to build with? He's asking for bread. In my studies, it said millstone. The Word of God says if you cause any of these children to stumble, you would be just as good to have a millstone tied to your neck and thrown into the river. And he asked for bread, and you gave him a millstone. One occasion here, it said a stumbling stone. <laughs> He's asked for some, some nutrition, something that you could give him that would cause him to grow and be stronger. And we give him stumbling stones. Preacher, I wouldn't do that. Which father would do it? I'll tell you which father would do it, the one that didn't learn how to give. Huh? I don't know. I'm going to give it to the Holy Ghost right now. But what if mama woke up at 2.30 in the morning, that baby was in there crying for bread, and she brought a bottle and slung it like I slung the baton. She didn't know how to give. In the spirit of the gift, we learn how to give, not just to give, but how to give and how people can receive what we've come to bring. And Christ was pointing it out, said, which one of y'all, if he asked for nutrition, would you give him a, a something to sink with or something to stumble over? Before he could even respond, he went to the next phrase. He said, which one of y'all, if he asked for a fish, would give him a serpent? As we talk about this today, um, you know, Fish is, is good to eat. Nobody said nothing, South Louisiana. Boy, I got y'all stumbling here. Open that door and let that scent come in here and wake somebody up. Fish is good to eat. That's good. That's better. But in that day, it was currency. In that day, it was a way to make a living. If you don't see it, I want to let you know that there's, there's a, an escalation that Christ is bringing us through that as a father treats a son and he learns early before he can even ask for bread, we bring him bread. Once he gets to the place that he can be productive, if he's asked for something to be productive with, you need to be able to give him something that he can be. But no, he said, which one of y'all would give him a serpent? Something that's poisonous, something that's going to kill him, something that's going to choke the life out of him. In the spirit of gift, we learn how to give because we're not jealous of a son. Oh, my, my. And, and a father, a true father of maturity would understand that in the spirit of giving and being able to give, if he's asked me something that could help him further down the road, I don't give him something that's going to kill him soon. I'm talking to you right now. Young parents, you're learning. You learn to fix the bottle, but one day they're going to need a little job. They're going to need a little job. And you're going to think they're asking for something else to eat. Don't do that. Look and see this 12 or 13-year-old wants to rake the grass, not just so he can go get some more bubble gum down there, but he's trying to learn how to work, and he's trying to learn. So you need to put aside 10 or $15 so that you can learn how to give once he's learned how to give service. I'm talking to you right now. I'm trying to build a family is what I'm trying to do here around the Christmas table, just to be honest with you. Christ says, if he asks for a fish, if he's asked for a way to be able to progress in life and to grow and provide for his family, which one of y'all would give him a snake, a serpent, venomous and poison? Make sure I don't get away, we get too far away from myself. So, so as we go, we, we have to learn in the spirit of gift to be able to give to the next generation. The next generation needs to learn how to receive. All right, the spirit of being able to receive it. 
What if he wanted, what if he asked for a fish and he really was hungry and we gave him a raw and said, learn how to cook it? Hey, you ought to be able to work with what somebody gives you. Immaturity unwraps the box and looks at it and says, I don't want this and throws it down. That's immaturity. Maturity says, well, it might not be what I want, but let me try to figure it out. Let me see what's going on because it might be something more in the box than I thought was in the box. It's about both generations learning how to be able to pass the baton from one to the other, from one age of generation to the next generation. Both have to be ready in the spirit of the gift to be able to receive, even if it ain't like I liked it, or to be able to give, even if they don't take it like I thought they would. I'm talking to you today. In building this culture, this giving culture is a lot more than me just cutting a check. Because early in life, it's hard to cut those checks. Later in life, it's a whole lot easier to cut the check and just not, not do nothing else. Here, let me give you 20 bucks to get you out of here. Talk to me, talk to me. I know I, I need to hear from you out there. That's both sides of the spectrum. Sometimes you look back and say, I worked hard for this. I ain't giving you nothing. And then later on, I'll just give you $20 to get you out of here. Ain't nothing to it. Just get you out of here. That's not the spirit of the gift. But being able to build a, a family and build an atmosphere that we can go from one generation to the next. Listen, of the kingdom of God, there is no end. And the only way it can end is if one generation don't pass it to the next generation. If, if a bunch of old people don't pass something to a bunch of young people, a bunch of young people don't have time for a bunch of old people, there is an end to the kingdom, and that is not the kingdom of God. Because of the kingdom of God, there is no end. So I have to be able to learn how to take from the last 70 years and apply it for the next 70 years. Come on, talk to me. But not if I ask for a piece of bread and you give me a stone. Not if I ask for a fish and I didn't like it or you gave me a serpent. We have to learn how. Here's the next one as I pilfer on down through the list here in verse 12. I, I never heard them say this one, to be honest with you. We always covered the bread, the stone, the fish, and the serpent, but nobody ever told me about the egg. Huh, the egg. If he asked for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? <laughs> that never was part of the passage for us. We just, they recited something else. So we have looked at the bread when he couldn't ask for bread, before he could ask for bread. We looked at when he wants to be productive through life, and now we're looking at the potential of the future. Are we talking in the same room today? I need you to see this progression that Jesus wasn't just saying, well, this is the things I see around me, yada, yada, yada. He actually was looking at a progression through life that we have to learn to be able to give and to receive from one generation to the next generation. We have to learn in the spirit of the gift to be able to release, but also how to be able to receive. And we see now the progression of life from where I couldn't do anything for myself, a father will help me. When I want to do something for myself, a father will help me. And if there, there's something that I can do, a potential inside of me, a father will help release that. A couple things that should happen right there. Number one, a father, a parent, has to be ready to do that. But also a son has to be able to receive that counsel and, and, and build the relay and build the exchange that we have to. The, 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 <clears throat> the potential of the future laying in the egg. I never understood this right here, and I, I still don't know if I do, other than that's maybe the nature of what I'm trying to tell you, is that a hen can lay an egg every day. And she can't lay more than one egg in 24 hours. That just is too much for her body. Maybe, maybe um, anyway, I'm not going to get into specifics of that, but whenever they go to hatching, they're not but a couple hours apart. Isn't that something? She can lay an egg a day, and if she lays 12 eggs, we're talking about 12 days difference from the first egg to the last egg. She sits on them all the same amount of time, and they're all born within about an hour. So they all hatch out, and potential just shows up. And isn't it something, and I don't even really know what I'm digging into other than the, the, the potential that's inside of every egg that God's put in your life is still there no matter how long it's been sitting in the nest. I don't know who'd need to hear that right there, but I need to let you know in the spirit of the gift, you may feel like you got the eggs in the nest and ain't nothing happening, but I want to let you know whenever things get right, whenever the, the temperature gets right, and whenever he sits his presence on the potential of your life, that it can all start coming to. Somebody in the room been saying, I've been doing this, that, and the other, and I ain't seen nothing. 
what? But I dropped by here today to let you know if the eggs are in the nest and you release them with the spirit of a gift, I declare life to it. Huh. I can declare life to it all I want, but I got to tell you something. You need to keep sitting on the nest. Yeah, here we go now. It ain't time for you to get up from the nest just because you don't feel nothing moving up underneath you right now. It ain't time to give up just because the weather got bad and things are starting to threaten. Old snake might come through and even want one of those eggs, but you need to sit there and defend that because what you got in the nest, there's a life inside of it. Which one of y'all, would, if he asked for an egg now, would give him a scorpion? The potential, and you know what you've been sitting on, and there's generations behind you that's in the room right now who need to learn how just to maintain on the nest because of the potential that can come out of it. But, 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 but Jesus said if, if you don't watch out, instead of an egg, you'll have them sitting on scorpions. You'll have them sitting on something, watch this, that can attach itself to them and just sting them repeatedly. At least a viper will strike and leave if he can. But a scorpion will latch himself to you and just continue to pour venom inside of you until his victim is dead. And if we're not careful outside the spirit of a gift, we'll give a scorpion instead of the potential of an egg. Jesus said, which one of y'all would do this? I wanted to bring that out to you. I felt the Lord put that on my heart to be able to translate that message to you all, to be able to understand that we all need each other wherever we are in life. Uh, My 20-year-old reminded me the other day, he said, you can learn from your mistakes. I think he said smart people learn from other people's mistakes, but wise people. No, smart people learn from their own mistakes, but wise people learn from the mistakes of others. If you're 70 years old, 75 years old, 60 years old, and you can look at a 20-year-old and say, young man, I love you and I ain't rebuking you, but I want to just hand this to you. What, what, what can we do? How can we work it out? I want to encourage you to do that. Because you could say that young person, that young married couple, that young mother, that young father, you could save them years of experiences and could be bad experiences. I see Brother Shane back there shaking his head. If he's dealt with youth for the past five years, he saved some of them a lot of years. If they could receive what he had to say, if they couldn't receive what he had to say, they had to live it. And they will live it, won't they, Brother Shane? I'm not saying anything you don't know. What I'm just really encouraging you is is there's a lot of demands from the generations before us who are asking for things. I just want you to make sure you operate in the spirit of giving. Not necessarily, I got to give you something, but that I can give you something that you don't mind receiving. Make it pleasurable, palatable, however you need to look at it to be able to see. So let, let me look on through here before I, before I get out here. So, so, and I am, I'm wrapping up. Uh, I see they prepared in the back, that's good. But I want you to take a moment today while we spend our family time, and you're going to be a little while yet before the meal's ready in the back, so I want you to have plenty of time to be able to do it. Uh, Brother Sal, man, you can give me something in the back whenever you get ready because we're going to need it. Probably about 30 minutes worth, to be honest with you. Um, but I don't, I don't want you just to say, well, we're waiting on something to eat now. No, you're sitting across the table from somebody who may be asking for a piece of bread. Somebody who may have been dealing with a snake but they want you to show them it can look like a fish. You may be sitting across from somebody who needs what you have to say, and I want you to take the time to do that and speak in each other's lives today. As I close this thing up, and I, we're going to revisit, I can tell you, that first couple of verses we're coming back to, especially for 2022, on knocking on doors and requests. But I wanted you first to have the spirit of the gift, to be able to present what God's given you. A lot of you have more gifts inside of you than you know. But you don't know it because there's been nobody around you to demand it. Or maybe you haven't made yourself presentable for others to demand what's inside of you. There are opportunities, not just in this ministry, but all over the kingdom of God for for the gift that God has inside of you and the blessing that you can be to others. Let us bow and pray. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you have allowed me to deliver this word. Lord, I pray that it stirs in the hearts of people. 
I'm going to do this. You don't have to look at me because you really, I'm really fixing to give you an assignment. Elder said, I don't know what altar call is going to look like with all them tables. I'm going to tell you just what it's going to look like. It's going to look like family sitting at the table. The words of Jesus, I just mentioned all of them to you. But if you've never experienced this Jesus, there's somebody at your table that can help you experience him today. Two things is going to have to happen. You're going to have to express your desire for him. And the next thing is going to happen is somebody's going to have to move in the spirit of a gift and give the prayer of salvation to somebody. I want to challenge you today. I want you to just in your own mind, close. You, I, I like you to close your eyes because you need to do some soul searching. What if my neighbor asked me about this Jesus? What would I tell Somebody told me just last night, I asked a kid about Christmas, and all he could tell me about was gifts. <laughs> if we ask them about Easter, can they tell us about any more than eggs and baskets? If somebody asked you about Jesus right now, could you tell them anything more than church? Who is he to you? Think about that for me. You might need this in 10 minutes. Who is he to you? Is he a voice and a mentor? Have you opened yourself up to allow him to speak by his Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you and direct you? Have you put yourself in the position to say, I need some bread? Have you remained in that position for that bread to be given to you or that fish or the potential of an egg? Have you put yourself in that position? I'm going to say this. If you're here today, you put yourself in that position. I pray there's somebody next to you or down the table from you or somebody you're going to cross right here today that can lead you to Christ. We've been plowing in this field for five years. I pray there's somebody in the building other than me that can lead you to Jesus. There is somebody. The potential's near you. And if you're wondering, if you're looking, if you're soul searching today, I want you to understand that you are in a family and there are those who can lead you right on into your future here today. So as we take our time to, to, to talk to each other, communicate, and converse back and forth, I want you to, to do so. If you need Christ, I need you to express that to somebody. I need that somebody to respond. If they ask for a piece of bread, would you give them a stone? If they ask for a fish, would you give them a serpent? If they ask you about Christ, don't start talking about yesterday's fishing trip. Take the time. We don't have to have a real reverent moment. We just have to be open to whatever comes. Father, I give you the praise and the honor for what you've done in this house. We give you the praise and the honor for our time and fellowship today. As we come to reflect on who you are, the Messiah who's come, the son who's been promised, the child who's been given. Thank you for coming. You didn't have to, but you did. Who would trade a throne Who would trade a throne for an animal barn, manger, bale of hay? Who would, who would do that except you loved us? When we asked for bread, you brought it. When we asked for fish, you delivered. When we asked for an egg, you promised. And we tell you thank you today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Should that opportunity come to you to lead somebody to Christ and change their eternal life, I want you to take that time. Hey. It can happen at an altar. It can happen over a cup of coffee. I got you a pot in the back. I don't know how long it's going to last. You get there. Help yourselves. I want to bless the time. I'm not going to bless the food yet. It's not quite ready, I don't believe. So we're going to be a few minutes. But, hey, this is what it's about. It's about fellowship. Uh, so I, I've, I've delivered the word that God's given me. Is there any among us who need prayer? I'll make sure I open that up before we go. Any among you, sick among you that may need prayer, anything that we can pray for, may, come forward if so. Come forward if so. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Yeah, keep me going back there, Brother Rick. I see a few hands go up. We'll, uh, we'll get to that coffee in just a minute. Does anybody among you need prayer? Come forward.